Can a Mormon be a worship pastor at a Christian church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We have today with us Jared Fawcett. Hi. Hi, Jared. Appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. And fascinating story and uh, just really interesting. So uh, I guess as we usually do, where were you born and what's your kind of your background a little bit? So I was born in uh, Casper, Wyoming. Okay. Um, and right after I was born, a uh, doctor had found me. My uh, mom was young um, and they, I got adopted oh. by uh, an LDS family. And Idaho. Right. Oh, in Idaho. Okay. Yeah. So you were raised in Idaho. I was raised in Idaho. Okay. <laughs> good active members of good active family and. Yes, they were um, all active. They they like to say I was born in the covenant, you know, even though I wasn't. <laughs> um, and uh, but yes, I was sealed to them, right away, blessed and. Oh okay. Everything. Went to primary and went did all the. To, sc- went- Went to primary. Priesthood things, I guess, deacon, teacher, priest, and all that. And, yeah, and, yeah, and most of it was actually, I was president of all the quorums and yeah. <laughs> everything else. So yeah. Okay. Seminary? Did you take seminary? Graduated from seminary, mm-hmm. and I was also, um, before I had went to the MTC, I was actually part of the Institute Choir at Idaho State University. Oh. It was led by a former um, Mormon Tabernacle Choir member. So. Oh, really? Fascinating experience, <laughs> I guess. Huh? Music has always been a big part of your life, and I'm, we'll Music. touch on that here and there. Um, so you go on a mission then, you say? Um, so that's an interesting story in and of itself. I, When I had prayed whether I should go on a mission or not, yeah. I was actually given a no, which was weird for me, given that up in Idaho, you're not peer pressured into drinking or anything else that you'd normally get peer, you're, you're peer pressured into going on the mission. Sure. Um, that's just expected of you. And so I, I was like, no, I don't think that's that a no. That can't be right. That can't be right. And everybody around me is going, that can't be right. Um, so I put in my papers anyway. I, I like to joke that when that happened, all of the guardian angels of mine like to hit, they all, they all looked around going, who told him yes? Um, <laughs> we kept telling him no. <laughs> we kept telling him no. Um, so I ended up, I went to the MTC. Um, I ended up having some mental problems there. Um, I actually oh. had some anxiety and, and it kind of got triggered by that event. Um, so I ended up coming home from the MTC. Okay, that does happen. And yeah. um, it does happen. Uh, but I think that was one of the reasons that I probably... I was, they were, God was trying to protect me then and not really, let me you go. Think? Oh, okay. But probably disappointed the family and all that stuff, I'm sure. If yeah. I, that feel a lot of guilty sometimes. But So what happens after that? So I come home. Um, I got back involved at a single adult ward because I was told by my state president when I came home, well, now, <laughs> now's the time to get married, so yeah. get working on that. Um, and... So I was really involved with institutes, went to uh, college in Pocatello at Idaho State University, mm. um, actually, and actually was the president of swing club there, um, <laughs> swing dancing and everything else. Wow. Um, but I was in, um, really involved with the institute. I helped DJ dances. Music's always been a thing. So the yeah. institute dances, I DJed those. Um, and that's actually where I met my wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was it the, one of the dances? She one was of the dances. There? She was uh, with a date. <laughs> no, she. Uh, it was actually weird enough. She, it was when the seniors were coming to see an institute. So yeah. she was actually a senior in high school. Oh. When I had met her. Wow. So we've. That's why I'm 35, and I've already been married for 15 years now. So. <laughs> so you get married in the temple. Yes, in the Idaho yeah. Falls Temple. Okay. And um, now just to back up a little bit, did, you went on a mission, so you certainly felt like you had a, a testimony to share. You felt like the gospel message was, was important. Was there anything that ever bothered you about Mormonism at that point? Um, or did you just have a good, strong, firm testimony of the gospel? I, I had a pretty firm testimony. Well, growing up, I had some periods where I hadn't really seen eye to eye with it. Um, <laughs> 
just because of some of the standards that were expectations that were placed on me. Um, my dad was a bishop, mm -hmm. so I had that fishbowl yeah. thing going on where everybody looked at you as the bishop's kid and right. making sure that you were doing exactly what needed to be done. And um, so being a teenager during that period, I rebelled a little bit here or there. <laughs> Um, but I always felt, um, when I was really young, I actually used to bring my Book of Mormon to school, an elementary school, and try to convert people. <laughs> convert people. people. So I, I, I've I, always been kind of that person. Um, and so I was, I, I did feel like I had something to share. Yeah. Um, and so I went. But a lot of the reason I went on the mission, though, was to please family. And please friend, family, yeah. please others. Peer pressure again. Peer pressure so, again, like, yeah. hey, you're you're less than so if you don't go. And nothing doctrinally ever bothered you or theologically? Not, type. not till after. Um, yeah. it, it was when I was in the uh, single adult wards. I was, uh, I was always the gospel principles teacher, and I was always teaching or in leadership roles, um, most time teaching. Yeah. Um, and I had come across specifically um, polygamy for the first time. And that really bothered me, um, and I could never get answers for it. Joseph Smith's polygamy, or Brigham Young's polygamy, Joseph Smith's or? in okay. particular. Had you heard about that before? I had not. Oh, that's I, interesting. <laughs> it was something I, I hadn't really. I didn't know about it either, so it's yeah. not surprising. But uh, so I came across that. I had come across some other things as well. Um, well, it, it snowballed into things, but for example, some of the signs that are on the temples, such as like the pentagram and other things uh, had been shown me and I was a little bit like, wait, hold on. And yeah. every time I thought about that, I was told, oh, that's just, you know, that's anti-Mormon literature or that's anti-Mormon things. Right, right. And it wasn't until um, the gospel topic essays came out and I read and where the, the church basically said, no, yeah, that happened. And I went, <laughs> but wait. But wait. I was told that that was an anti-Mormon literature thing. Right. This this wasn't supposed to be something yeah. that actually happened. Um, and because it actually happened, it yeah, started bothering you. Huh? It really bothered me. There are a lot of topics covered in those, and some there's a lot of things they don't say, but uh, they have, uh, I guess, tried to at least share some of their stuff. But it is shocking, especially to those of us that grew up in the church and never heard about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Relation, if you can think back to your time, uh, your relationship with Jesus at this point. When I was, um, before I became Christian, um, I always viewed him as, I mean, now I can't explain like the love and just knowing how much he loves me. Uh, but back then it felt like I could never please him. Um, he you felt, weren't doing enough? Or? I would never, I was never doing enough. He yeah. was the... He was the taskmaster that always wanted more, and I felt like I could never give enough to please him, um, and felt that you know judgment was going to come, and I'd I'd miss the mark <laughs> by missed... uh, by a few, and wouldn't be able to um, be where I wanted to be because I was never uh, you know it was good old Second Nephi where you do all you can do. And he covers the rest, and I never felt like I could do enough to do all I could do. Yeah. And did you sense that he would be the one to just pick up the, the balance there? Is that what you... I, I felt... When you fell short, so to speak, or... Not really. I felt like I, had, I hadn't I had hit a high enough mark for him to, pick, him up the to okay. pick up the balance. That's a terrible feeling, isn't it? It was. <laughs> yeah. It was horrible. Yeah, I, I always had that sense. I don't know if you know this story. I guess I won't take time to share it too much, but just the, the kid that walks into the room and realizes it's Jesus and he drops to his knees and the other one is, walks in the room and comes back out and it, he do, he's not affected at all. I kept thinking, I'm going to be the one that walks in the room, sees Jesus and walks back out, not realizing who he is. you know. And, and I always felt badly about that, that I would be uh, not really recognizing who Jesus was. The Bible, uh, back in those days, I guess you carried that to church every Sunday. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, and I, I was somebody, when I was planning on going on my mission, um, even though it wasn't something that the church wanted you to carry around, I did have the missionary pal, as they called it. It was a little black book yeah. that was supposed to basically have all the answers in case. Questions came up. Questions came up. Um, 
what I've learned now is a lot of it's, you know, proof texting and a lot of those verses from the Bible are taken out of context in order to prove yeah. the reality <laughs> of things, but yeah. um, which I was involved with. I, I, read, I read enough of the Bible to do that, but I can tell you now, reading the Bible now, I'm like, is this the same Bible <laughs> that I've been reading this whole time? Because I, re I read verses where I go, oh. Who put those in there? <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah. So that, and especially this time when I gave my life to Jesus, I also am trained to be a pastor as well, and with reading those, some of those things, I'd have questions, and God would be like, look at this verse. And then I'd be like, oh, well, that answers. But what about the priesthood? Look at this verse. Okay. What about marriage? Look at this verse. Oh, that was there the whole time? I never saw that. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. That is really funny. So you going along, you're married in the temple, you're both active, I guess, in the church, yeah. children come along and so on, and so what, what, and what, what happens? And, uh, you know, I, so we got married in the temple, um, not too long after we have our first daughter, she's 13, um, and, you know, blessed her, she, she, she had the whole growing up in primary and sure. young women's experience. Uh, my son, who's nine, same thing. Um, although I really, f he got baptized um, when he was eight. He uh, was probably one of the reasons that I started looking at things a little bit differently, though, too. Really? Um, his was an interesting story. I felt like, I, I feel now that we, we baptized him out of you know pressure, but <laughs> I almost, I wish I would have listened to him. And I think it's important that you do listen to your kid on whether you know they should do something, because he after the meeting with the bishop, which I was in there, and he heard, you know, all the different things with that, he looked at me and he says, so being buried, risen from the dead, all this, and, he's, and he looks right at me, and he's a smart kid, and he goes, isn't that a bit heavy for an eight-year-old? <laughs> and I went, well, when you put it that way, <laughs> yeah, that is a little heavy for you, isn't it? He's a precocious kid, <laughs> yeah. I can tell that. So he, he's like, isn't that a bit... Yeah, heavy, much, yeah. and I'm like, um, yeah, and so I don't think he truly understood what what the baptism was really about. I mean, he yeah, he was. They're he, certainly not accepting Jesus at this point. They're no. just becoming a member of the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and, a very astute. Uh, and then uh, my 17 month old. So I have a 17 month old son. Um, it was interesting when I blessed him. Uh, I I blessed him differently than I blessed my other kids. There wasn't the uh, you know, you're going to go to the temple, you're going to find your mate type of a type of a blessing. I talked to him about having a relationship with Jesus through it. Yeah. And he cried most of the time until I brought up, you need to speak to Jesus and you need to talk to Jesus. It was a big part of it. Um, it it's what I felt to say. And he actually stopped crying wow. when I mentioned that. And that <laughs> was another, like I look at that now As a... and go, Okay. God was talking to you in different ways over he, those years. Huh? He was he was yeah. slowly bringing me along the path <laughs> and going, "Look, yeah. come on, you're going to see it eventually." Yeah. So what else happens, or what happens next? So, um, so we we go through this. Um, it comes to a period about f five six months ago, where because um, I had left when I was 29, um, I had left before because I had my motorcycle blessed um, by a pastor in Idaho <laughs> and felt the spirit from him. And, it, and it, You were it, living in Idaho? I, I was living at the Idaho at the time. Okay. And it was confusing to me because he had the spirit and I was, I was like, wait, how can you have the spirit if you aren't, aren't Mormon? Mormon? Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Um, and I, so I was his worship pastor for, you know, a year. Um, I wrote like 20 of the songs that they still Sing there. They still sing there, oh, really? and it's it's still a thing with them. So um, that answers our question of how a Mormon becomes a, <laughs> a worship leader, huh? Yeah, it, by getting his motorcycle blessed. I know it's an interesting thing. <laughs> um, and you did that for a year. I did that for a year. Uh, I came back to the church. Uh, my my back to the Mormon church. Back to the Mormon church. Um, a lot of pressure was going on, and I hadn't. I thought I had accepted Jesus at that point, but I really hadn't. Um, when you were writing these songs, these were Christian songs. These were Christian songs. They talked about 
grace. They talked about the cross. They talked. Did you about, understand them at that when you were writing them? I don't know if I did understand them as well yeah. as I probably should have. Um, Certainly, as you do now. As I do now, <laughs> but it was definitely okay. it wasn't me speaking through them. Yeah, it was definitely given to me, not God giving those to you. It, glory to Him. It's not yeah. <laughs> wasn't my talent at that point. It was purely Him. So you go back to church, and it was a pressure partly maybe your your wife. Yeah, you know, she wanted you back. And she wanted me back, um, and I and I went back to church. In fact, and I I. I decided, well, I'm going to give this a real go. I'm going to be fully in. Um, and it's funny, you read how people say, well, only inactive people leave, or only people who aren't involved. Um, the Sunday before I left, I, uh, well, a couple Sundays ago, I was released as the second counselor of the Elders Quorum Presidency before the reorganization. But I was also the state, I was also facilitating a state self-reliance course. So I had two state callings wow. at that point. Right up to the time. You right up to the time. time. So it wasn't like, what did you do wrong kind of a deal, or why are you inactive or anything? Yeah. No, in fact, it, uh, we had moved wards, which was kind of, we, we waited to fully pull away before until we moved, so we didn't have to explain it to a whole group of people. Oh. Um, and it was a big shock to them because the new ward went, hey, they're not coming. <laughs> and we had just gotten baptized um, in July, actually, um, in the Provo River. That was cold. Um, as Christians. As Christians. Oh. And they had found out about that, and, and they were like, wait, what's going on? Um, and it was a shock to yeah. everybody else because they didn't see us coming out. Um, but this time when I left, uh, it was because I felt I didn't feel a connection to God, and I felt mm. like there was something missing. And... But I always was listening to, like I said, music's a big part of it. So I was always listening to K-Love and the message and listening to Christian music. Right. And I really loved it. Um, and the road show came into West Valley. Yeah, explain what this is, the road so show. It's, it's a on, Christian road show. It's a Christian road show. It's put on by Compassion International. Um, they bring really big acts, uh, which in the Christian community, most of them know Matthew West for King and Country, Zach Williams, Natalie Grant. These big artists were there, and it's $10 at the door because they're doing it so that you sponsor children and help out and they have yeah. Christian charities that you donate to. And, right. and I went because I'm like, you know, I really want to go. Well, I had felt the spirit there more than I had felt, felt in four and a half years. Coming back to the Mormon church, you didn't, yeah. And it opened my eyes. Yeah. So I started looking around. And what's interesting to me is the church I'm going to now is actually introduced to me by a member who's still a member but he got his theology degree from Yale. Oh, so he's had questions? <laughs> See, he's had questions, and he, and, well, he, he looked at my, my belief system and how I was at the time, and he goes, you're really going to like this other church. Center point. Center point, yeah. yeah. He's like, you're really going to love The music and the... And he's the like, you're going to love it. This is going to be you. And yeah. I went and went, yeah. yep, yeah, it's me. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, and uh, I, when, when I went, though, the first time I actually prayed and said, God, whichever way you're going to use me, let me know. Because I feel like I'm disconnected. So if I'm supposed to get you know, deeper into the LDS faith, let me know. If I'm supposed to leave, let me know. So I went that first Sunday. Excellent service. Amazing. Loved every second. Loved the music. Loved yeah. the message. And I was like, okay. Awesome. But I, I was planning on doing both that and the Mormon church going right after because sacrament meeting at my ward was right after. <laughs> so I went to that service, went to sacrament meeting. Interesting enough, um, and some people can call it answer, some people won't, I guess. But we were in a side pew in that ward, and it just so happened that we were skipped with the water that Sunday out of nowhere. The bread came, but the water didn't? The water did not. And we were skipped, and we were in the side, so it wasn't like we were in the overflow. Or yeah. We were right there. Nobody said anything. Nobody saw it. And it started turning my wheels. I'm like, well, if Christ is a living water, I'm not getting it here. Oh, my. And so it started, and God, Do, God started talk, started being like, uh, uh, you're getting it? You're, yeah. you're getting it? Come on, come, come on, come on. And I went, I'm supposed to go. And I went, but... And then I just looked up and I'm like, eh, but this is social suicide. I'm in Utah County. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to leave. This isn't, you know, and um, 
then I went my second time. I'm like, well, I'm still going to do both. I'm just going to figure this out. So I went my second time and uh, service was there and everything else. And uh, I'm like, okay. And that's when I had met the pastor, um, Pastor McKinney. He's awesome. And he um, met him before the service. And then he talked to me after. Well, as I was leaving the second time, because I was like, oh, I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm just going to do both because that's what I'm going to do right now. And as I was leaving, I got this impression that you're going to do that. And that's why I'm studying to be a pastor now. Um, but oh, I got, you're going to do that. Huh? You're going to do that. And I went, ah, no, because <laughs> that means I have to talk. That means I can't be quiet. Okay. But I got the impression got stronger. I went, okay. So that's what I'm, wow. okay. So now you're studying to do that? Yeah. Then? Well, good so currently you. I'm studying um, to do that. Um, and uh, it's... Quite the transition I'll bet. from everything, um, but it's it's been interesting. It's been like a. I've always felt like the LDS Church was kind of the middleman in the relationship between me and God, and it was a yeah, lens I that you looked at. I didn't sense that, but I do now. I know exactly what you mean. It's always the hierarchy: the bishops and the stake presidents and the general authorities are all between us and God. This is how you worship Him. This yeah. is how you come to Him. This is what you yeah. do. I never had that personal relationship until I went and went, oh, um, hi. When you started going to both, did your wife uh, join you or did she, did she start listening to what you'd been learning? So the first time I, uh, she knew I was going to go um, and she had been with, she'd done this, this, she'd seen this before when we were in Pocatello. Oh, because you'd been that one year without yeah. going to the church. And that probably upset her, of course. It did. Yeah. Um, this time I, so I, the first time um, I didn't re really tell her much. I'm like, it was a good service and everything. And we didn't really discuss it further. After the second time, when I got the impression I did, I went, well, it's time to tell her. Um, and so I did. I explained it to her. Um, now, had you done a lot of study at this point? Did you have a lot of I, I concerns had about? All those concerns from before just yeah. became magnified at that okay. point. But then I started finding answers within Christianity for everything that I started questioning and Having everything. the Bible open up and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, the best way I've ever heard it explained is so in my life I had two towers going on. I had the LDS church and I had Jesus Christ. And I had a relationship with Jesus. And then essentially what happened is this tower just crumbled. But this tower was right there. Because you didn't need anything else but Jesus. I didn't Jesus. need anything else yeah. and went, okay. Let's do this. That, that's powerful. That's good. And so I went towards that tower and... And what did your wife do? So she, she, um, you know, prayed about it and had her own moments and decided that um, she would follow me as well. So she has come and she's now part of that's pretty, Center Point. That's pretty courageous too, isn't it? It is very courageous of her. I'm, I'm proud of her. That's I know that's tough, especially when you have family and... Mm -hmm. and, and friends and everything. That's, both of uh, our, both of our friend, uh, both of our families are still very active um, in the faith, and and uh, some of our friends aren't speaking to us now, mm -hmm. um, but we've we've made a lot of new friends, and uh, yeah. and it's been it's been an experience, but you know even when your family doesn't want to approach you or anything, I had this insight the other day that's. That you know, if they want a relation, if they want a religion instead of a relationship, well, then that's fine. Um, I have a relationship with God, and that's yeah. what I rely on. And not a religion. And not. You mentioned uh, talking earlier something about I was in control of my destiny. What do you mean by that? So I always felt that I would, like I said, I always saw Jesus as the taskmaster, as yeah. very much, and. Just having that freedom and looking at everything in that different lens and knowing grace was there and that he loved me. Yeah. It wasn't, you've fallen. It was, I love you so much that I died for you. Yeah. And, it, and we don't understand that. We don't appreciate that or understand that as Mormons, right? No. Uh, I mean, we... We feel we like just, we need to do things... Right. to prove ourselves. Well, and we have that scripture, you are bound, God said, you're bound, I am bound when you do what I say. Mm -hmm. So it was always, we can put God in our debt if we just do enough. You know, and this is where I meant 
control your own destiny because if you're a good boy and do all yeah. the things you're supposed to, God's got to pay off, you know? And, and, I, and I felt that until, until this time when I read in the good old Ephesians 2. Yeah. Where you're saved by faith and not by works, uh, lest, lest you can boast. Uh, and I used to, I used to actually joke about that before I had left the church. Um, I used to joke about like fast and testimony meaning as being this boastful thing of being like, hey, have you read the new um, book that was put out by the apostles? Oh, you haven't. I have, and that yeah, makes me I, so much better. Yeah. Or I did this service project, or I did, and I, and so it really made me look at that Ephesians two a little bit differently when I went, oh. <laughs> Okay, and lest you could Pharisees <laughs> and Sadducees and yes. stuff. Yeah, and saw and saw that that's where I was, and went, oh, okay, now I can see this. So I have, I'm more in control. I, I'm, I'm well, actually, I'm probably less in control of my destiny now. But I know, no matter what happens, I'm covered because I'm. Yeah. Bible's taken on, as you've mentioned already, a, a little different perspective. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about the program that you're going through to become a pastor. What's involved with that? So I'm currently getting my um, bachelor's degree in divinity, which okay. was a lot. Um, I found a program online actually that does it for free, which is good. Oh, Because wow. I currently already have an MBA, so which means I already have a lot of student loans that I'm currently paying off. <laughs> I didn't need to add to it. <laughs> well, that's nice, though. So, but you're learning a lot. Oh, it, it's amazing. Yeah. Diving into... You know, the New Testament, the Old Testament, Greek, and yeah. learning. Oh, that must be fascinating. It is Well, it's, amazing. I mean, I, I haven't taken any schooling, but the, the Bible has just opened up so much for me. And like you were saying, I think uh, that scriptures are there that I just never saw before. Like Ephesians 2, 8. And, well, or and, um, in Hebrews, I can't remember, I think it's 7. The priesthood. And, yeah. yeah. I read that the other day and was like, it says everything. <laughs> Jesus is my high priest. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is my high priest. Oh, <laughs> this makes perfect sense now. Well, Why Jared, we're just about out of time. Anything you want to share with family, friends? Just kind of a witness. Just know that God loved you so much that He sent Christ to die for you. You don't have to feel guilty about not doing your, you know, home teaching or doing everything. His yoke, His His burden's truly light. Just know that He loves you, and come to Him. He's waiting with open arms. Yeah. And isn't there a joy and a freedom and a peace that comes with that? There very much that is. That confidence that you're, you're in his hand, so to speak. And uh, so the music, can people listen to your music somewhere? Not right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm working at, I'm kind of recording those things and getting those out oh, there. And be, so. Well, maybe if you let me know later, we'll post those so that people can listen. Well, do. But it's interesting that you would write those <laughs> songs as Mormon, and they were really a Christian song, and they're still using them. They're still using them. <laughs> well, thanks, Jared, for coming and sharing. Any Thank last you. second thoughts? Or no. I think we got it covered. We got it covered. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's a joyful message, and I know it's probably been challenging uh, in many ways, but it's sure worth it, isn't it? It is worth it. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us on the Ex-Mormon Files. We'll see you next time.